Hey folks, and welcome yet again to another episode of Helium Hacks Happy Hour. My name is Travis, I go by TTG over on the discords, and I will be your host this evening. So, uh, happy everyone was able to join us for this very special episode. I've been seriously excited about this. When I recently uh, met and was able to speak with Ennis, who is going to, uh, who has kind of taken over another project and said, eh, this, it's not quite being maintained, uh, this needs to be done better. And um, has been working on uh, a Helium uh, network integration with Home Assistant. And I know a number of people on this call use Home Assistant. We've been talking about different integrations in the past and different devices that can be you know, run under uh, the umbrella of Home Assistant. Thank you so much for, for being with us today. Uh, just a, a little bit of quick business before we get into this. Uh, if we have newcomers to the call, welcome. This is uh, Helium Hacks Happy Hour. It's a very casual show. Um, I, I encourage people to turn on their microphones, their cameras, because we love to see your pretty faces and uh, get to know some of the other developers in the Helium community. If anyone uh, is looking to develop a node on the network, we do have a Helium developer kit that is based around the Rack Wireless WizBlock ecosystem. And I would love to mail one of those out to you. If you, um, you know, if you're, uh, if you don't quite have the hardware that you are needing to get started with the project, let me know, and um, we'll make sure that you do. I am going to call call one of you out by name, Maria. It's great to see you. Uh, it, it's always lovely to see you. And I hope I'm super happy to be here and super excited about the demo and demonstration that NS have today. Uh, I I have been playing with these tools like a long time ago. I did a uh, like a my own voice assistant on a local, like, I don't know, like four years ago using an ESP8266. ESP so yeah, they were excited to see how all these things work using Helium Network, of course. Red, oh, it's great to see you. And also I'm super excited today because I am like getting my Helium t-shirt as well <laughs> for an event that we have sponsored by the Helium Foundation. And uh, two weeks ago here in Colombia, Medellin, it was a really cool event to spread the, the word about what is the hidden infrastructure and how they can start using it. So yeah, many things happening over here as well. Oh, that's awesome. It sounds like you got a pretty, pretty growing scene going on. That's very cool. Um, I, I'd love to see some pictures. Um, you got to post some pictures from, from the event. Sure, sure. Actually, I have some over here. Let me just make a recap and I can show them later. Awesome. That sounds great. Thanks, Maria. Um, I want to go ahead and, and hand this over to you, um, Ennis, if you want to get going with the presentation and do just a short um, intro to who you are in the project and um, take it away. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Travis. And hello, everyone. It's nice to meet you. It's a great pleasure to be here today. Thanks for having me today here. And I have the big honor to present you the new Helium integration for Home Assistant. Yeah, and I prepared a little bit of a, of content, and let me let's let's dive into a short introduction. Right, probably some of you are already familiar, or probably most of you are already familiar with Home Assistant, but some of you might probably not. So I will um, start with a um, with an introduction also to Home Assistant to um, make you know what Home Assistant even is, yeah, and how you can leverage this in your daily life, in your daily business, and so on. Um, yeah, today we are going to look into the Home Assistant, Assistant, into our Helium integration, into the roadmap, and how you can be involved in this de the development of this integration. But before we dig into it, a, a little bit of, um, of my background, who, are, who am I? My name is NS. I'm a Germany-based software developer. And uh, in my free time, I have a lot of hobbies. Yeah, 3D printing, innovative hobbies. I'm I'm also data scientist in my in my job. Yeah, so I'm also doing data science as, as a hobby. And uh, blockchain is basically a data database which allows data science activities. Right. So that's also probably here uh, one motivation why I why I choose this topic as to to tackle. Yeah, I'm also very involved in IoT. So probably I can show you here. I I, I developed a sensor. Yeah, 
example, yeah, here, this is my, um, I, I'm also 3D printing the case. I made this on my own, yeah. So it was really, it's, it's, it's a really cool project. And when I started this, yeah, I actually didn't know about helium before, yeah. And this was my initial project to um, get to know helium, yeah. And w w when I got no to know this, I was so fascinated about this network. And that's why I'm here right now. I'm also very interested in sustainability. So at home, I'm right now trying to build a little recycling plant. Yeah, I have a plastic shredder here in my in my office. I have a 3D printer. I, I'm right now building uh, an extruder from, from my hot glue pen. Yeah, so it's it's a, a lot of DIY, yeah, but uh, it, it makes fun, yeah. And I ha have, of course, uh, in, in context of sustainability, a photovoltaic station is also critical, yeah, you need to produce your own energy to run your uh, 3D printer and recycling station with green energy, ideally. Yeah, that's it from my side. Um, yeah, how am I involved with Helium? Yeah, I, after I got to know about this network, yeah, I directly bought an, an, a, a hotspot, yeah. I have such a rack hotspot. I have an antenna on my balcony. But as you can see here in the background, my apartment is not in the best position to place hotspots, yeah. And that's why I was so excited about this Solana migration because this allowed me to be a staker. Yeah, I have not the, the area to place antennas, but I can be a staker, so I can anyway be involved. And this this was what, what I like. So this this should be show the staking because I did also some data science with with the staking data, and all, of course my my sensor which I building at home. Yeah, and now let's dig into. A little bit into Home Assistant. What is Home Assistant and its target target users? So there are already apps which uh, focus on data for Helium, yeah, Hotspotty, um, like like apps or Helium Tracker, yeah, you all, or yeah, such apps, yeah. But who are the target users of Home Assistant? Probably this is a critical question to answer because it's not um, always the end users who are using Hotspot, yeah, um, yeah. With um, Home Assistant, you can you basically get such got get such a smart home dashboard. Um, this dashboard is available on your smartphone, on your computer, and you can do activities here. So in this dashboard, this is an, some example. You see the weather, so the ba most basic um, sensor data. Yeah, you have weather data. You probably have um, a, a, a vacuum cleaner here. You can start the vacuum cleaner, stop it, and so on. You see some statistics here. You can engage or control your your sensors and your devices using these buttons, yeah, or or yeah, a monitor in any kind. But in in the background, so the the important thing I think is here also that you can of course connect the controlling and the monitoring of the data and build some kind of automation. So you you get the data in, you build some conditions to control. Um, your your devices. So also automation plays a critical role here. So any questions at this point before we? Um, I'm I'm not sure how familiar you are. Is is this new or is this um, already well known? Such um, probably. I, I think you're probably going to get a mix of folks um, I see on this call. Uh, some that have already used it and some that may just uh, be using it very soon. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> probably yeah. you could, yeah. It's about 50 50, would, would be my guess. Yeah. Yeah, because that would depend on how deep I, I dig into a demo. Yeah. I, could, I can show you my smart home dashboard, probably, if you're interested in what I can do with it, why, why I use it on a daily basis. It's for me, it's basically the fir first thing I look into in, in the morning. Yeah. Is are my sensors fine? Is the weather fine? Um, how is my electricity spending? How is my electricity production? And so on. That sounds good, but feel free to dig deep. Yeah, okay, go okay. into, if you could go into the logic that you're using. But let's look into Home Assistant. What, what do we have here? So Home Assistant provides a nice demo. Yeah, if you, if you want to try it out today, right now, yeah, you can simply click on, on this demo. You can click around, you see, yeah, we have here some ways to control. Of course, this is all simulated. But you see, when I click on here in the garage lights, you see this map changes changes the garage light. So it's basically simulated. But of course, if this if this control button would be connected to a real sensor, real device, real actor, then you could control it in real, yeah. And this would be really really cool. 
you can switch your um, the status of your rooms. Yeah, like um, you are outside, you are you are coming to home, and you want to heat your 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 apartment. Then you can select it do, do, before you start driving to home. You can of course um, also using Spot Spotify integrations control your music. Yeah, you can control your uh, you, you can maintain your security cameras here. Yeah, see who. Um, what, what is going on in my home and so on. And of course, sensor data, some basic sensor data. Yeah, and probably with that, I can yeah, show you also how I use it. Um, yeah, here are some general use cases, monitoring, yeah, monitor your involvement or your sensors or your um, other things, control your assets in some kind, so your lights, anything you, you can control. And of course, automate. You can con connect the monitoring with the controlling and then automate everything. Okay, um, let me show you uh, probably my key motivation, of course. Yeah, I have some, act I'm a software developer. I have activities on GitHub. Yeah, my photovoltaic, helium, my shares, energy, remote 3D printer. I'm also, I'm using Octoprint for my 3D printing here. And I have dedicated servers and monitoring all of them is a challenge, right? So. so Probably you might need different apps for each of these. And for me, in Home Assistant, I collect everything. Yeah, I have one app, my Home Assistant app, and I can look into this each morning and I have a clear idea what is going on. So it's the single app to rule them all for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably also a little bit of about the target users. Yeah, um, Home Assistant is definitely um, targeted to power users. It's not straightforward like um, Hotspotty, yeah, definitely not. Um, Hotspotty is rather straightforward. You go to the URL, you see your hotspot data, and then in, in, in Home Assistant, you need to in, get involved. You need to develop probably some visualizations or graphs. Yeah, this is some effort which needs to be done, definitely. First, let's dig into into my dashboard. Yeah, I have I have a dashboard. So, for me, um, for instance, I, I showed you this green sensor here. Yeah, this is connected, of course, with uh, using the Helium console. To uh, and I shared my data from the Helium console to my MQTT, which is basically connected with this Home Assistant. And here I see really my live data from this sensor. It sends uh, data about each 10 minutes it's actually not this sensor because this is this is the green sensor and this is this sends data from the pink sensor so green was the previous version the pink pink is the latest version yeah and this is currently outside so i see um, the temperature on my balcony and the shadows how it changes during the day basically on real time and i found out for instance this is way more um correct than what I get from official um, data. Yeah, Often it's a little bit higher, it's a little bit lower and I get a better, problem. for me, it, I get a better idea with my own sensor here. Also, I see here the humidity on, on, on 10 minutely basis. Really interesting to see this. So, and this is, this sensor is powered by helium. Yeah, the connectivity is powered by helium and the visualization here I do in Home Assistant. And, and I really love the visualization because it's so simple. I get an idea. I can scroll over all these elements to see what, hap what happens here. And of course, when I click on this, I can get a history of the data. So for me, it's sufficient. Um, probably um, I can also, yeah, each phone is of course also a sensor. Yeah, I have my phone here and I also connected it with my phone here. So um, using the GPS data, it's also IoT, basically IoT data, yeah, I can check where I am. I have my power consumption of each room. Let's switch to the next page. This page focuses on power consumption. So for instance, right before before the this meeting, I was on, on, on my living room, yeah, and uh, watch television. So this is the power consumption of my TV, for instance, yeah. And of course, um, so probably for me, the cool thing about this is um, I have smart, switches here and in my office in my in my, uh, my my living room yeah and i can control here the whether the switches are on and off and i mentioned yeah i can of course also automate this so each morning when i before starting to work at 7 30 my um, home assistant activates the switch of my office so that everything is activated and at um, 6 p.m it deactivates the electricity and 
I calculated this, I saved a lot of um, power, uh, power uh, um, electricity using such a solution. So it's it's really it's saving money basically for me. Of course, also my uh, PV station. Yeah, I see how much uh, electricity I produce each day. My apartment is not in the best position, so it's it's probably a little bit lower than uh, most others have. Yeah, but I'm I'm really happy because I'm consuming about three or uh, four kilowatts per hour on each day. So in summers, it covers all my power consumption. Of course, also the people, yeah, here you see the, my, 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 each smartphone is also a sensor. You can see here the sensor data of my smartphone. And of course I have Octoprint on my, on my 3D printer and connected it via live, via live cam. I can start my uh, printer here. I cannot start the job right yet, but this is also to be done. And of course, as I mentioned, um, my GitHub, yeah, I also monitor the GitHub project. Um, for instance, the Home Assistant Helium integration. This is uh, what I added recently. And um, before, yeah, no, to Helium, we don't, we will dig in, in a minute. Uh, but first, do you have questions at this point about Home Assistant? What, what is its usage and how, what, what's, what's the value of Home Assistant is before we continue here? That's good stuff. Thank you. Um, question, you have lots of sensors, right? Mm -hmm. Are each of those sensors LoRaWAN connected or do they go through a multiplexing gateway? It's a different. So the, uh, the common the technology is MQTT. So all data is sent to MQTT. So my, my, my smart switches here, for instance, connect via Wi-Fi, they send it to MQTT and my LoRaWAN sensor also from Inhalium console, I configured an integration which sends data to my MQTT as well. So everything is uh, connected in my MQTT instance. Okay. So you have a mix of Wi-Fi connected and LoRaWAN connected, correct? Okay. Ex Great. Exactly, Great. exactly. Yeah. All right, thank you. And yeah, I, I think this um, the connectivity of, of my smartphone, this is done directly using the Home Assistant app. So I, I'm not even sure how this is connected. If I have connectivity, it sends data automatically. Um, yeah. So the common um, aspect is the MQTT where everything is sent in the end. Target group of Home Assistant are definitely Home Assistant. It looked really nice, yeah. But I what I what I hit from you is the configuration, yeah. So when I added this, yeah, Probably let's let let me show you how you can add such a such a visualization. Of course, there are some very simple visualizations. Yeah, I can click here on Add Card. Um, I can select something here, which which is probably helpful for me. For instance, this one, and then select um, which entity I want to select. So here I have a lot of entities, my helium entities, and also a lot other entities. Let's let's say I want to. Um, which is like the temperature, temperature essential, yeah. And then I can save. So it can be this easy to add some things, yeah, visualizations. But also if you want to have some, some more customizing, then it gets really hard. And let me show you this one. So this is um, what I customized a little bit. I added a, 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 another visualization type, yeah, this mini graph card. And then I needed to configure this using this uh, configuration schema. Um, and this, of course, this is the why it's not probably meant for non-power users in here, because if you want to re really customize Home Assistant for yourself, you need to put some effort here. Yeah, and let now let's deep into our Helium integration, yeah. Um, so yeah, this is my motivation. Yeah, I showed you, I have my sensor, my pink sensor, and I want to have uh, some visualizations and Home Assistant is my single point where I have collect all my visualizations, all my sensors and so on. And of course, in, in context of Helium, I have my, um, my, my Helium hotspot in, on my balcony. Yeah, and probably it has at some point some issues. So how do I um, find out about these issues if I, uh, if if my antenna would be on a remote place, yeah, then Home Assistant might play a role here, and this integration might help here actually. Here I made such an example. Yeah, I added an, as a very simple automation, which um, sends me a notification if my hotspot has some issues. And the issue is if I don't uh, make 
uh, any rewards in the last 24 hours, then there is probably an issue, right? Because I expect to have some uh, rewards on a daily basis. So this is something which you can of done with this integration. And this is probably one motivating actor uh, aspect um, to dwell into this integration. Um, before the Solana mi migration, yeah, there was actually another Helium integration. But unfortunately, this integration is, uh, is no longer maintained. Before um, the migration, I used this integration and I was so happy because um, I could use Home Assistant. I was monitoring my, my assets and it was really cool. But after the migration, this was no longer possible. And I was really sad because I, I wanted to really become staker and I wanted to be involved. But um, if, I don't know whether you are staker as well, but currently the app has some weaknesses if you have multiple staking positions. It's slow. You need to click on um, simulate to see how much rewards you are making. So it's really hard to get um, the data out of the app right now. And there is no other solution. So what I decided is I decided to make my own integration. So here you see the staking, a lot of new possibilities in Solana, the, all the governance topics yeah, might be integrated using this. We have now SubDAOs, the IoT, mobile, and probably more in the future. And of course, monitoring our hotspots. Let, let's look into our integration. So I prepared a little bit of, of, of the, as a separate page with, with my data and with my, um, my, my specific dashboard, yeah. Um, what we see here is, for instance, some generic data first, yeah, about Helium IoT, about Helium Mobile. This data you can, all, of course, also find in the stats page of, of Helium, yeah. But here you can use this data for automations, yeah. This is the cool thing. You can, with any of these data points, you can build your own notifications. You want, if you want to get notifications, if, some, for instance, um, mobile is deployed on multiple countries, yeah, this might be a highlight, then you, you will get a notification for that. But of course, also what I mentioned earlier, if um, your hotspot has issues. Um, of course, I want to monitor also the prices of the different uh, new um, tokens, yeah, um, IoT, mobile, probably even Solana, yeah, and of course of Helium network token. And I want to, I can of course also build automations out of it. Let's say I want to buy IoT in, in the short short term future, yeah? And I'm waiting for a specific price. And of course I can simply make an automation out of it. Send me a notification when IoT reaches this and that price. And that bam, you, you get your notification and then you can act upon. It. Um, of course my, my wallet balance, yeah, very, very critical. I want to um, have my wallet balance anytime um, in, in reach, I want to see how much IoT, how much mobile and so on I have in my wallet. And for me, the most critical one is the staking, um, uh, the staking, my staking positions, because in the app, it's, in, in, it's so inconvenient, yeah, because I, I cannot work with that. So this was actually my main motivation. Here I can really monitor my staking positions. I can build automation. So here you see, for instance, each position separately, but also aggregated on the sub DAOs. And now what I could do is I could simply create a notification, send me a notification if it reaches 100,000 IoT, for instance. Yeah, this is so simple. Let me show you this one, um, probably as a, as a kind of example, how, e how easy it is. So we have this um, in here, but let's switch to the settings. In the settings, you can, um, after we configured it, you, you will find the Helium integration in here. Here we have devices, yeah. And the integration maintains all the devices you are probably interested in. So here we see, for instance, the device for Helium staking for my wallet. And I can click on this one. This is the data I visualized in this dashboard. And here I can click on automations. Ah, yeah, now it's here. For instance, I want to do something when my IoT value changes. And what do I want to do? The condition is, if, um, for instance, the numer numeric state is above, I don't know, 100, 100K, yeah, then let's make an action for my one, one of my devices. For instance, my smartphone, yeah, this is in Germany, it's called Handy, yeah, it's my smartphone. I want to send a notification, um, IoT reached 100, 100K. 
and I can save it. And basically, that's it. This is the automation. Now you get notification, your notification on your smartphone. Okay, but not only that, of course, your hotspot rewards are also here. Um, your hotspot rewards are um, first based on hotspot, but also aggregated on your wallet. I integrated here another test hotspot because I found it very interesting. This was very different from my from my use case because another wallet, yeah, I don't know whose wallet this is. I just randomly selected it because it had also a mobile for testing. Yeah, I have no mobile um, positions and also no mobile uh, hotspots. So I needed some wallet to test. Here, for instance, you see this um, wallet also has mobile and IoT. I see it here in an aggregated way. But if we look into the de devices, yeah, let's switch to the devices uh, of, of this wallet. This wallet has a lot of um, hotspots, a lot of hotspots. And of course, monitoring all of them is really hard. And this integration might here again help using this um, aggregated view. You, we see all, no, no, not this one, um, reward wallet for the wallet. We see all the aggregated ones, but also separately. For instance, this, um, I think here, yeah, here we also see this is also a mobile hotspot. We see the IoT and mobile rewards. Um, it's differentiated between claimed, total, and unclaimed rewards. Yeah, In the app, you only see the unclaimed rewards, but actually in the blockchain, we also have the information about the total rewards. And off-chain, there is this information. Um, no, it's th these are on chain, yeah, and the unclaimed rewards are off um, off chain, meaning here you see you, without meddling with the data in the background, you can see here um, clearly what are your rewards, what are you, the total rewards of your hotspots, and so on. Okay, do you have some questions at this point? There have been a couple of questions that have come about in the in the chat, um, asking about where the MQTT uh, broker is. And mm -hmm. I, I believe that was kind of addressed, but um, can you touch very quickly on what, what you're running all of this architecture on? Mm -hmm. So um, where am I running this? Um, since I'm a software developer, I have also some experience with server administration. So I deployed it on my own server. Probably I can also um, mention where I'm running this. In Germany, we have a cloud provider called Hetzner and they have very, very, a cheap um, virtual cloud instances. I don't know how you call it, but such cloud instances. And I, I basically run this on the most cheapest one for four euros per month. How I deployed it, I have, I'm using Docker. I have one Docker Compose file where I have Home Assistant and MQTT. And simply by running the Docker file, I have my Home Assistant and MQTT instance in one on one server, basically. That's that's the, the the landscape, and in my blog I think I even documented this. So this um, Docker Compose file. So if you're interested in, I can uh, after this meeting share with you the, the Docker Compose file. Docker Compose up, I can deploy Home Assistant and MQTT. I was a little bit lazy because um, of course you can do um, MQTT on a separate instance or and such, but I, I I just wanted to have it simple on one instance to have also easier maintainability. I'm assuming they require inbound internet access reports to be open. Yes, uh, my home assistant and my MQTT are accessible from the internet. Of course, uh, I, I needed to set up also my SSL and my, my pass, password authentication. So this is really critical, but then it works quite fine. And currently I don't have any for me, I, I don't have any critical data except of my switches, yeah? So anyone who has, <laughs> but of course it should definitely be secure, nevertheless. Yeah, Home Assistant has bundled MQTT broker. I, I didn't knew that, so I used a separate instance um, to for, for MQTT. Probably there, there is an in-app in, in in MQTT instance as well. That's only if you're running core, I believe. On Docker, you can't get the apps. Um, excuse me, can, could you repeat this? The... Um, with Docker, um, it's only Home Assistant OS, I believe, and uh, another version that has the MQTT apps. 
Um, <laughs> I'm currently running MQTT standalone because I'm running HA and Docker. But it's interesting to see you've gone for the blockchain route. I've been using Home Assistant to monitor the logs on hotspots. Well, a hotspot I haven't got around to adding more yet, but I haven't even looked at looking at the off-chain and on-chain statistics for Helium now. <laughs> yeah, we can dig deeper into this one. So where does the data come from? If you're interested, in, we can look into the project. So uh, what I, uh, yeah, I've probably mentioned the most obvious one, yeah. There's a GitHub project, and you can install this integration in your Home Assistant as well. As well, um, currently, so for, for Home Assistant, if you install this, you don't have any any marketplace, yeah. And there's this Home Assistant community store, which is basically the marketplace for Home Assistant. You need to install. It's called Hacks, and you need to install this. And here you can install more uh, yeah, integrations and front end front end is all the visualization so if you need some custom visualizations you probably will find it here so for instance my my graph yeah, let me show you this one I, I really like this this mini graph card yeah i can create such um graphs basically with 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 this integ um front end inter um, tool and of course helium integration is an integration and you will currently yeah it's still yeah if you look into this open marketplace yeah and look for Helium, what you will find is the Helium blockchain. And this is still the pre-migration tool, yeah? So the pre-migration integration. Um, barely some sensors work here right now because this is not maintained, as I mentioned earlier. So you need to currently install it using the custom repositories. And this is what I documented also in, in, the, in the documentation here. So you will find here some um, introduction. You will find here the installation guide. You need to have hacks installed, and then you can add your custom repository. I also showed here how this can be done, and then comes the configuration. That that's it basically. So using these custom repositories, you can install it, and then you will have it in in here. After your installation, um, you can use the the advanced configuration. I call it yeah using the configuration YAML file of Home Assistant. This is very, very unpopular. A lot of people hate um, using working with this configuration YAML because it's sensitive to tabs and spaces. So if you have one wrong space in the configuration, it messes up your whole configuration. A lot of people hate it. Yeah, and that's um, the most recent update was here to um, in, to use the config flow. This is a feature in in Home Assistant, which enables configuration using the UI. So you click here on Add Integration. After installation, you will find here the Helium integration. And then it's as simply as following this, uh, this questionnaire. You, how many wallets do you want to maintain in your Home Assistant? For instance, one, or you can have multiple wallets. Yeah, And then click on Submit. You enter your Solana wallet address. You can access this address from your um, Helium app uh, wallet and edit here, click on submit, and then it will show you devices like here, what I have. And after that, you can access the devices here. You can investigate your devices here, click on it, see what, what data you have. And of course, this um, config flow allows also adding to dashboards very conveniently. Um, I can now add this, for instance, into my um, Helium dashboard. And of course, I can add um, on my Helium dashboard as well. But um, this, as I mentioned, if you want to have some custom graphs, this requires some effort. Um, let's switch to the, yeah, this is what I showed you as well. The simple configuration using the UI um, can be done here as well. And I know you said it requires, you know, a lot of effort, which is true, but there is a very engaged community that's built up around Home Assistant that, um, you know, is, is ready and able to help you out if you're just kind of getting started. It, it seems to be a great community there. Yeah, definitely. And uh, my goal is with, with this session is also to get probably an, 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 a, a, a channel in, in, our, in our Discord to also provide you support, yeah? We currently, as I see, don't have any home assistant channel in our in our Discord server, so probably this might be also some point where we can also connect with each other, support each other, 
share our examples, share our use cases. So this is what I find really also cool to work with you, all of you on, 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 on all the creative ideas and possibilities. So assuming I have a sensor sending data to Helium, yeah. mm -hmm. what at a kind of a high level, what do I need to integrate that into Home Assistant? Mm -hmm. Like I need to create a widget for the data to go to, be it a, a graph or a chart. Yeah. But what's the pieces in between my Helium console and, and uh, Home Assistant? Yeah, I would like to show you how I configured my Helium console. So um, I, I would need a little bit of time, but I, but I can also show you this offline if you're interested in um, how, how, so my first sensor here, I did it without any integration. So I did it everything um, manually. I went to my Helium console. I set up a device, then you get these device IDs, you maintain these device IDs in your sensor. Yeah, then they are basically part of the software of the sensor. And if the sensor runs, it sends data to this address, yeah? basically to this ID via LoRaWAN. And then your hotspot catches these signals, yeah, and it sets to the it sends it to the um, to the application server. So this is what what I my understanding. Please correct me if you if it's, it's wrong. And then um, you can do stuff with this data. So in in this console, you can define your integrations, where what what happens with this data. Um, you, uh, via functions, you need to probably decode your data, you need to uh, process the data a little bit, and then, then send it to your MQTT, to your backend. And then um, you, your backend can be anything. In my case, it's Home Assistant and MQTT, and I process it in such a way that I really get JSON. So it's, it's already ready to be usable in here, and um, that's why it was here quite convenient to just um, edit here. Um, but of course, this also requires uh, some effort. And this is something which I also took into in, in, in the roadmap. So um, here we have the device integration. Currently, I think for first time beginners, it might be very confusing. Yeah. And my, my impression is if we would have a very simple guide for a very simple sensor, yeah, we could onboard more people into the console, into all, all this, into the device usage, how devices are integrated, how we can visualize this data once at least, yeah. And then people could um, further improve this, further advance it and make their own products, sensor products. This is probably the idea here. So I think it's really hard to make a general device integration because it depends on a lot of things, but we could probably make um, a specific use case with very simple sensors like this, yeah, temperature, humidity, and then help um, first time um, beginners to onboard with sensor usage and sensor development. That's the idea of this roadmap element at least. Right, yeah, I, I'm familiar with like things board and a little bit of the other cloud platforms, but not so much home assistant. So. Uh, that home assistant is kind of one I'm up to expose my data to. I've got it set up and I can set it up in the in the Helium console and and create whatever JSON is required at home assistant. It's making that bridge to what data do I need to send to home assistant and creating the entities and all that other crap at the home assistant side of things that I'm not familiar with at this point. So. So this integration at least uh, covers all the Helium entities. Yeah, you will you, you won't need to configure manually all your sensors for for getting Helium data, the blockchain data. This is definitely not the case. And if we would have such an integration, it would be definitely one step by step guide to jumpstart with your um, Helium sensor project. Okay, great, thank you. Any further questions? Otherwise, probably um, I have one last. I think. Uh, yeah, this, this third point is uh, about the roadmap. Probably we could, yeah, I mentioned this in, for instance, the device integration, this is still need to be done. We, we are still missing the uh, staking stats and all the governance topics. These are still missing. Um, for instance, how much VE, HNT I, do I have and, and so on. 
probably we might need more uh, automations, probably blueprints for automations so that we can really um, have some ready to usable automations available. And of course, adding more hotspot stats, more even more general helium stats. For instance, how many, many data credits are used? So I, my, the, ex, the expectation is at least to have all the met, at le, met, uh, metrics which we have also on the helium stats page to build, of course, automations based with this data. Yeah, this is about this about the roadmap. So um, the, the next big step is also, of course, providing more examples. So I, what I did here is in the beginning just adding the sensors. Yeah, but of course, um, this project basically lives with, with all the creativity and all the use cases you are going to do with this integration. And that's what I also mentioned in the next steps. Yeah, this integration is only an enabler for your ideas and your innovations. And for me, what would be really interesting is if you uh, at some point use this integration, how do you use this integration? How can others benefit probably with this, uh, with your use cases? So if, if you would have su such a channel, yeah, I would very welcome your screenshots. How do you use it? Um, what is the effect? What, which automations do you use? How can it benefit the community? And of course, if you will not get such a channel, you can, of course, anytime use also the GitHub issues. You can simply create an issue, provide me your screenshots and ideas, and probably we, we will get an example which others can access in the GitHub repository as well. Okay. Uh, I've got a question for you. Uh, yeah. I know a lot of community members here, especially on this call, have been playing around with ChirpStack um, as an LNS uh, recently. And I was just curious as to where the seams lie. Like if, if you were to go from Helium console, uh, move over to a chirp stack um, to move that integration with you, um, are, are there particular seams that it would be rather easy to cut over uh, via? Or? Actually, I'm not that familiar with chirp stack. I sure. once um, tested it out, yeah, but I, I don't know what the effects will be regarding, for instance, my sensor here. Yeah, if I would switch Chirp from stack. console to... It's going to be seamless if it's just, if it seamless. relies on MQTT, it's going to be seamless. Yeah. It's MQTT right out from the Chirp stack integration. MQTT. Straight okay, right into your it, broker. It should be no issue, actually. No. Yeah, yeah. It should. It's, it, should have, it should actually be easier. <laughs> didn't um, didn't disk say MQTT didn't work on Chirp stack? Oh... Uh, I think it doesn't I work right yeah, now I on, the yeah, helium, on the Helium, on the Helium, like if you just spin up like a private LNS chirp stack, dude, like MQTT works perfectly fine. Yes, you can actually does. go from MQTT on the hotspot, dude, which is kind of cool. But with a the lot helium, of the LNSs need certs for MQTT before they'll work. So it's up to uh, whichever LNS operator you have to set those up on their server for the MQTT. And, and that's that's the thing I've run into why it hasn't worked. But if you run it like on a local net and you turn off SSL um, and you bypass the MQT starts, it does work. So I didn't mean to get down a rabbit hole here. I just sorry, sorry. <laughs> I just saw it as an easy solution, but yeah. yeah. I'm not the I have never integrated it with the uh, home assistant. But I have had internal MQT working as an integration. But you're going to now, right? <laughs> well, now, well, I just needed to turn on the certs. I got to find out who does that, really, <laughs> on the test one I'm working on. So it's either going to be Paul, probably. <laughs> this is cool as hell. Yeah. Thank you so much for presenting on this. Uh, this is great. And if anyone has questions, now is the time. Now is the time to ask. Uh, so if someone wants to get involved, they can just pull down your GitHub uh, repo and go to town, right? Um, if they want to set up Home Assistant, there's guides on um, on the Home Assistant site on running on what Raspberry Pis. Um, they they go through they're rather thorough, you know, talking about power consumption and what you know, making sure that uh, you're not going to brown the things out. So um, I, I think at least initial guides should be available to kind of get up and get rolling to the point of integrating with the Helium console, right? Excellent. Fun.
Yeah, definitely. I, uh, an integration to the Helium console, this would be really cool, I think, uh, making it easier. And I think I saw some um, some approaches already. So if I'm not for, uh, wrong, there is already one integration which handles um, at least it in, a, in some way, but I'm, I'm not sure right now. I forgot to mention one thing. Um, so currently also this integration, um, I applied for official um, adding this into the hex store, so Home Assistant um, Community Store. This is currently in progress. They have a large um, uh, queue of um, integrations, which also we are which are also waiting. So in some weeks or months, hopefully this will be available also in the hex store in, the, in hex. So you should be able to install it without using uh, this custom repository thing. Is that something where a community like writing, like letter writing campaign would, would help uh, kind of up the place in the queue or? Uh... I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm already waiting for, for I think over a month now. Yeah. And also okay. other integrations are waiting uh, since a long time. They only co cover integrations which are um, clear that they miss something, some automations to for, for testing. So if, if this is missing, they also have some quality expectations, of course. Um, and if they are not met, then they simply uh, decline them. And uh, thankfully, this integration was not declined yet. <laughs> yeah, but of, awesome. of course, I, I I checked all the actions which I required. I checked all the um, GitHub actions. Yeah, and I think this should be this should work when they are going to check this out. This out. Awesome. Probably yeah. a GoFundMe page would kick it along a little faster. <laughs> Yeah, let's see. But what? But, but the big question is, of course, we have an, another Helium integration right now, the pre-migration integration, which is currently still listed there. So probably, what we might do is um, say to the Hex Store um, community leaders or moderators that this should probably be removed at some point. Gotcha. Are you in contact with the author of the the pre? Uh, yeah, that repo. No, unfortunately not yet. Um, I used it for a long time, and then I wanted to actually work first with the with, with the first integration, so providing code changes. But it was so much to change, so that's why I actually started with this new project. So I really considered working with the previous project, but it was so much to change, and um, I had so many ideas, and this also resulted in a new architecture for the integration. That's why I simply started the new. Well, I'm glad you did. Yeah, great. This is great. And yeah, if there are no further quick... questions, that's it from my side. Yeah, Leo. Okay. Just a quick one in terms of the integrate the API for the blockchain data. Is that using uh, Luis's um, Heroku API? Yes. Yes. So Luis' um, project contributed a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. In the beginning, I um, I also so for me this was a big learning session, right? So I, I'm working with blockchain um, data for the first time. Yeah, I'm, I'm involved in Bitcoin since 2014, but I never looked into the data. I never worked with the data. So this was my first time and I learned so much and it was so incredible, so interesting to work with this data. And then I built the functionality and then I, Lewis also built it in, the, in this Rust project, which is incredible. It, it's, really, um, it's, it's really cool. And I did it once on my own to understand how it is working. And then I um, partially, for, for instance, for the staking data, yeah, I then used simply his API to and used that in this in this integration. Oh, sorry, just great work actually. And and one one comment to Jason, don't listen to him in terms of turning on, uh, turning off TLS. You don't want to use MQTT without security. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think that's definitely the case. So I, I wouldn't also use Home Assistant without TLS. And for me, it was really crucial that I use my Home Assistant with with uh, with SSL and with my certificate. And I think in my Docker Compose, this is the third thing I had there. There is this NG, NGINX third bot um, Docker image, yeah, which sets up an NGINX um, reverse proxy and then forwards all the traffic of Home Assistant through this NGINX third bot. Proxy. So this was what I, how I did this it here. I, I forgot to mention that as well. I can definitely share also the Docker Compose file. Cool, cool. Does does it have any issue with uh, self-signed certs? 
from my side, no, definitely not because I'm using third bot. It's really convenient. I, I, I have, I had no issues with that. I've just dropped the link in to CERT, the CertBot Nginx image. It'll um, build uh, a private CERT and then authorize with Let's Encrypt and just roll every three months. Nice. And that's just or that's just scripted to automatically um, re-up that every three uh, months? Yes. Yeah. CertBot has a bit of an issue where it won't sign unless you've got a certificate. So there's a script in the Docker image that you run, and that'll build a dummy script to allow you to collect uh, a real cert. And then it'll just carry on updating every uh, three months, I think it is. Gotcha. Cool. All right. Well, um, uh, thanks again for presenting. Uh, we're right at the top of the hour. I, we can hold this a, a little later if there's more questions here. But as far as getting a channel set up, let me see what I can do. If not, there is the Helium Hacks Happy Hour channel that we can all touch base in, at least uh, for the time being. Um, mm -hmm. you know, if, if there are any questions that you wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, ah, oh, damn, I, I should have asked this. Um, but you forgot. Um, you're available. You're you're on Discord, um, you know, within the, within the Helium Discord. And so... Um, everyone on this call should be able to at least touch base with one another uh, going forward yes. with this project. So you can ping me anytime in the hex channel, yeah, and then definitely I will respond as soon as I can. So on, on weekdays I have, of course, also my work, so I'm most uh, mo uh, most often available on weekends, yeah. But when I'm available, I will definitely react and support you in your home assistant and Haley projects. Excellent. Just um, put a thread. Just put a thread out on. The hacks channel because Keenan won't give you another one, so just thread it. Sounds good. Yeah, we could definitely do that. Absolutely. Um, well, uh, I guess until we meet online, you know, um, thanks again for the presentation. And I'm going to be playing with this tonight. Uh, I, I'm, I'm quite excited about it. Um, you mentioned on your dashboard, uh, which reminded me of this, uh, about the Spotify control. And I wanted to kind of kick something out there uh, tonight. If we go to, uh, we, we now have a Spotify Helium Hacks Happy Hour channel. Um, so you, it has both video and audio on it, I believe. So I could, I'm just going to throw this down here in the chat. Um, it does not have all the episodes uh, here. I think there's, what, 70, 70 some odd episodes. But I put a few of the recent ones up. Uh, please give me some feedback. Let me know if this is uh, useless or if it does, if there is some, you know, advantage of having, you know, this with the Spotify podcast as well as the YouTube, which I switched over to a podcast from a, just a playlist a while back. If there are no other notes here, then I'm going to call it a week. Thank you very much for the presentation and um, I'll catch you online. Uh, thanks. Thanks for having me here. This is incredible stuff. Thank you. Thank you very much. Everyone else. Um, next week, everyone be safe. Uh, same bad time, same bad channel. See you, folks. Bye. Bye.